All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between sensory and motor neurons. Specifically, how information flows to the brain to be interpreted and processed, and how information flows away or descends from the brain to our muscles and glands. Now, before we begin, let's make sure we actually understand what we are looking at and let's label some key parts. Now, in both structures on the left and right, what we're looking at is the central nervous system, the CNS. We have the spinal cord, which takes information to and from the brain, and we have a cross section of the brain. In other words, if I was right here and just cut my brain this way, you would see this image right here. Here's my right hand, and I'm looking at you, of course, this way. We also have is the connector between the spinal cord and the brain. This is what we're going to label as the brainstem. Okay, and we'll talk about why that's important in a few moments. But this would contain structures like the medulla, the pons, and the midbrain. Another important structure we'll label right here is what we call the thalamus. Okay, the thalamus, which is this structure right here. And because we have two of them, we can use plural thalami. Now, once information reaches the brain, we'll talk about this area in a moment, is what we refer to as the primary, what? The primary somatosensory cortex. All right, let's repeat that again. Primary somatosensory cortex. And this is the region of the brain that receives information from my skin, right, cold and hot, to make sense of the world around me. While motor neurons are traveling away to my muscles and glands from what we call the primary motor cortex. Okay, primary motor cortex. So as we talk about these structures, we're going to come back to them and understand how they deal with sensory and motor neurons. So let's start with the sensory pathway. Now here's our scenario. You're walking along, you're hiking on a trail, everything's beautiful, and all of a sudden, a ladybug lands on your arm. Now at this moment, your brain doesn't know that a ladybug has landed on your arm. All your brain knows is there's some sort of stimulation, right, some sort of stimuli from the outside world. And what's ha happening is it's activating what we call sensory receptors. Let's say it again. What is it? Sensory receptors. And we're going to label this kind of in order. So here's step, step number one. We have what we call sensory receptors, okay? And what's their job? Their job, and they're located all over our senses, our eyes, our ears, our nose, our tongue, and of course our skin, is to detect stimuli from the world and more specifically turn that energy, in this case it's touch, into an electrical signal. Do we know what that electrical signal is called that travels between neurons? It's called an action potential, okay? And we'll label it as an AP. So in step number one, we detect a stimuli and we turn that energy into an electrical signal. Now, what happens with that signal? Those receptors, we'll connect all those together, is going to travel, that signal is going to travel via the sensory neuron to the spinal cord. So that's step number two. We have our sensory neuron taking that action potential to the central nervous system. Now, because this video, of course, is on sensory neurons, let's talk about that specifically, okay? So what do we have? We have sensory neurons. And what do we know about sensory neurons? Well, we know that another name for it, you might see two names in a textbook, is also called an afferent neuron. Okay, so what's it called? An afferent neuron. Okay, and we'll have a memory technique in a moment to remember afferent um, and sensory neurons. And we know about this is that it carries, okay, carries information, right, information from the outside world, touch, right, cold temperature, hot, spiky, smooth, those type of things, um, to or toward the CNS the central nervous system, okay? So that's what we know. It carries information to or toward the central nervous system, right? Got to ascend so we can make sense of it. And more importantly, or at least part of the scenario, is that we'll find these sensory neurons in our peripheral nervous system. What do we know about our peripheral nervous system? Peripheral means outside. So we'll find these sensory neurons in my arms, in my legs, anything outside of my brain and spinal cord, all right? So we have a detection, we turn that into an electrical signal. That signal travels via the sensory neuron, and where does it go? It's got to ascend and go up, okay? So it's going to stay on this side, this side of the spinal cord. It's going to go up and up and up and up and up to the brainstem, okay? Now, what happens when it hits the brainstem? Remember, everything in the body is crisscrossed. What do I mean by that? Everything in my left hemisphere controls the right side of my body, and everything in my right hemisphere controls the left side of my body. Everything is crisscrossed. Now, there's a fancy name for it. It's called uh, decussate. And we here is we have decussation. So in the medulla, in the brain, we decussate. Okay? 
And now we're going in the other side, right? Here's my right arm. It's going to decussate to my left hemisphere. And we'll continue up to where? To our thalamus. Okay, our thalamus is the relay center, right? It decides where information should go in the brain um, based on the stimuli and helps filter out information as well. And because this is my arm, we are going to synapse with our third neuron into our what cortex? Our somatosensory cortex. Where's that located? Our parietal lobe, okay? So let's recap. We have our stimuli receptor, right? Turning energy and active potential. We have our sensory neuron taking information. It's going to decussate, this is step number three, at the brainstem. It's going to ascend to the thalamus, number four, and finally make its way to our primary somatosensory cortex to be processed. And now consciously we're aware it's not just a weird stimuli, but it's a specific ladybug, right? This is how information travels. And here's a nice question. Should information flow slowly or should information flow really quickly in the spinal cord? I think it should be quick, right? If I'm in danger, maybe this bug is biting me, that's got to go really quick to the brain to be processed. And the reason I bring that up is because this track is made up of, I'll use a different one, white matter. Okay, you might have heard of white matter and gray matter. Um, and this track is made up of white matter. Why is that important? Is because white matter has a specialized types of axon, right? So here's our neuron, right? And what we find is that white matter, the axons are myelinated. There's a tiny fatty substance around the axon called myelin that makes the message go faster and helps insulate it, right? So white matter goes really quick, and this means that it is myelinated axons. Axons, okay, so we have a myelinated axon. So is it slow? No, it's extremely fast. And just one more, if we take a look at this cross section, where could we find the somatosensory cortex? Here's the central sulcus right behind the central sulcus right, anterior, we have our somatosensory cortex, okay? All right, so now let's say we want to slap the bug away. Now, don't do that, but maybe it's biting you. Uh, but in this case, maybe we are lifting some weights, okay? So how would the motor cortex work, right, motor neurons? Well, just like we have here, we begin with something. And we're going to begin, in this case, with a thought, right? My thought is I want to lift something, right? Thoughts are going to turn into, what's our electrical signal called? Action potentials, okay? So I have a thought in my head, I'm about to lift weight. That message is going to be relayed from where? My motor cortex, okay? And one thing to note, and this is the same thing with our sensory cortex, is this part of the brain isn't random. It's mapped. In other words, if I want to reach for my arm, the part of my motor cortex that deals with my arm is going to be activated. Just like information from my hand is going to go to where my hand is. If it's my eye, it'll go to my eyes. Our cortex is mapped, so we have very specific regions that things are coming from. So what's happening? I have a thought. We have our number two, our motor neuron is gonna take that information away from the brain, okay? We have our motor neuron, motor neuron, right? Now talk about that memory technique, okay? And instead of efferent, or sorry, afferent, we call this efferent, right? Or afferent, this is the other name for it. Okay, and instead of carrying info to the central nervous system, we are going to carry, okay, information away from the central nervous system, okay, away from our brain, away from our spinal cord to our muscles and our glands, okay? And just like our uh, sensory neurons, it's primarily located in our peripheral nervous system, right? Everything outside of the brain and spinal cord. Now, here's our memory technique um, afferent. We can think of as arrive, right? It arrives at the brain, it ascends, while efferent exits the brain, right? So there's a nice memory technique, E and A. So afferent arrives, efferent exits, okay? So what happens after we have a thought? We turn that into an extra potential. The motor neuron carries information, bypasses the thalamus, it's gonna head to where? Our brain stem, okay? And guess what's gonna happen? It's going to decussate, right? It's going to cross over because everything in the brain is crisscross, right? But instead of synapsing with a different neuron, it's the same axon, it's the same neuron. It's going to head down and down and down and down until it reaches its final destination, right? And we're going to synapse with another neuron, a second neuron, and it's going to contract the muscle, right? It's going to release acetylcholine and tell that muscle to contract, right?
Now, here's one thing to consider. Um, of course, I have my thought. I have my, my motor neuron. I'll label this as our third step, right? We, we um, synapse with another neuron. And then number four, we finally reach that muscle. What's important to remember is this motor neuron doesn't always have to go to a muscle. It's going to go to what we call an effector. Okay, what's an effector? Um, it could be, yes, it could be a muscle, okay? And it could call that muscle to stimulate. It could cause that muscle to relax, but it could also go to a gland, okay? Maybe it goes to our adrenal gland to secrete hormones. So whatever the effector is, it's going to cause some sort of response. And just to be clear, where we would see the motor cortex on our other angle, right? This is a lateral view. It's gonna be right in front of or interior the central sulcus, right? Right in our frontal lobe. Right, so we have our motor cortex um, anterior to our central sulcus, and we have our sensory cortex in the posterior. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.